Rahman Lakhvi to India or to either of them to face trial. And is this a sign that the world is losing patience with Pakistan? That's the discussion in part two. But first, President Mukherjee's comments to Central University sound like an admonition to politicians across the political spectrum. He warned the government against excessive use of ordinances. He told the opposition that disrupting parliament was not acceptable. And to both sides, he pointed out that not only does parliament need to function more effectively, but it also needs more sittings each year. This is perhaps the first time an Indian president has spoken so openly and critically, and it's our first discussion tonight. And now joining me to discuss both what the president said and the precedent he has set is former Attorney General Sodi Surabji, the well-known Asian Age columnist Akar Patel, Congress spokesperson and MP Abhishek Singhvi, and BJP spokesperson Sambit Patra. Sodi Surabji, in his speech to students and faculty members of central universities, the president has made some comments about Indian politics and as well as the parliament, which seem really quite <coughs> unprecedented. First of all, regarding the spate of ordinances passed recently by the Modi government, he pointedly said, and I'm quoting, ordinances are meant for a specific <coughs> purpose to meet an extraordinary situation under extraordinary circumstances. To many people, that sounds like a warning to the government not to overuse ordinances. Is that how you read it? Well, it should be read along with his other statement about there shouldn't be disruption of the houses. You see, the whole thing, ordinance, presupposes a state of affairs which makes it necessary for the president to take immediate action. Now, suppose in a case, there is, uh, the legislation can't brook delay, but even then the ordinance, the legislation is not allowed to be passed because of the disruption of the other members of the house, then I suppose there can be a situation where ordinance is necessary. But it all depends on the nature of the legislation. Legislation was so such that he cannot brook delay. Then you may issue ordinance. The warning is you can't have ordinance Raj. You can't have one ordinance and Reep will get the same ordinance as that happened in the Bihar case. That was the warning that the president sounded and actually he was really okay. uh, re rephrasing the article, the provisions of the article. Now, secondly, Akar Patel, the president has also said that passing a bill is the easy part of lawmaking. He says the difficult bit was building consensus amongst various stakeholders. Is that not another gentle hint to the government that they need to do more to build consensus in the Rajya Sabha, particularly with the opposition, so that bills don't get stalled in the upper house? That was the thought that many people had when this government came to power, that they would work with the state governments and the regional parties which had a few seats in the Rajya Sabha and sort of uh, keep the uh, Congress at bay. They've not done that. I think they've uh, antagonized, I think it is fair to say, a lot of the parties in northern India with the statements that the government's uh, ministers have made. The Prime Minister himself has not come to reply to these charges. Uh, somebody suggested that there ought to be a PM's uh, a question hour uh, akin to the House of Representatives. Uh, I think that might be a good uh, a solution. House of Commons actually. Not at all outspoken. I would say it's a welcome, uh, welcome thing, whatever the President of India has said. And in fact, he's rightly pointed out to a dwindling scenario in Indian parliamentary system, where just for the sake of opposition, the parliament is opposing at places. We have seen as to how the Rajya Sabha did not function the last session. And he has rightly pointed out, he has just, just not spoken about the ordinance route. He has also spoken about the fact that the opposition should also behave and the opposition should allow mm. that, they, uh, that I, the I, House I, to I, function. It should not just go under the disruption. I, I, I'll take up what he said about the opposition to Abhishek Singhvi in a moment's time. But the pointed comments that he made about ordinance was clearly, if I can so phrase it, a shot across the government's bows. Are you a little disconcerted by it? Or are you quite happy to be told by the president in public, don't overuse ordinances? 
No, definitely. It's not that we are discomforted. But let me remind you of the fact that if we are going the ordinance way, it is only for the country's benefit. Okay. Long, uh, long time because of no development being ushered in into India. And that's the reason as to why the government does not want to appear as a helpless government. Now, as far as ordinance route is concerned, if we go by statistics also, I mean, the top... No, no, let's not, no, 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 hang on a second. This is not a comparison between previous governments. So let's keep out of the statistics of other governments, Nehru or Indra or whoever. It's the Prime Minister response and your party's response to the president that I'm interested in. So, Mr. Rabji, the key issue and the key point you made about the acceptability of ordinances was the question of immediacy urgency. And in a very real sense, that is also what the president was talking about. Now, do you think by implication the president is saying that ordinances like land acquisition or the minerals and mines amendment ordinance or possibly even the insurance are not urgent? And those are ordinances that he has concerns about. Do you think that's implicit in his comments? I don't think... No, no, I don't think any particular ordinance in mind. He was really restating the actual position under the Constitution. The necessity, there must be urgency. The situation can't brook delay. If that is so, and there's no opposition for legislation as such, many okay. people are in favor of it, but they just won't want it to be passed. There's surely a situation arisen which makes it necessary for him to take huge action. Again, I repeat, the legislation must be of such a nature that is required to be immediately passed. Absolutely, so and, and, and the There's fact that the president has chosen to remind the government and politicians of the need for urgency to justify an ordinance, to many would suggest that in fact perhaps the president is in a gentle way saying some of these ordinances weren't quite urgent and therefore were not the right sort of issues to be passed by way of ordinance. That's an implication that many will read even if you no, don't Karan, accept no, it. Karan, I, I, you may I, not accept it, but others will. I don't agree. Okay. I don't agree with that. You may not, but there are many Is others who feel that's precisely the point the president was making. Uh, Abhishek Singhvi, the other issue the president raised was in fact a comment directed specifically at the opposition. And this is when he says the noisy minority should not be allowed to gag the patient majority. And he added, Parliament must not yield its space for legislating and policy making to mass mobilization and street protests. Many people believe that when he says this, he's actually wagging his finger at the Congress, the TMC and the left. Well, I think, uh, you know, when we discuss things in the abstract, uh, Karan, we should be uh, very clear that the president is a statesman who has more experience of parliamentary practice and procedure and he has in fact quite frankly wagged a finger at both sides he has clearly pointed out that ordinances uh, are, must satisfy the emergent test and he has said something which is very very clear and good and necessary that parliament must not be disrupted but and the but is the most important every statement has to be applied contextually there were three sessions since this government has taken over uh, Karan. Two sessions had the highest productivity. The first half of the December session had the highest productivity. In all these three sessions combined they had more productivity than any prior 10 year period when the BJP was in opposition. The last four days contextually, last one week sorry, was because of Ghar Vapsi, mm. Christmas, and a series of things can I interrupt? which warranted a statement from the Prime Minister, it never came. Can, can I That's interrupt you it. there? We are not can in I, can, habitual, can I uh, you? You see, habit you're, of disrupting. You know, you're yes. giving the context in such a way as to put the onus of that disruption on the government because you believe the government or the Prime Minister was not being cooperative. But when the President says, the noisy minority should not be allowed to gag the patient majority, He's not looking at contextualization. He's wagging his finger at the opposition because he believes that the opposition disrupted yes. parliament. And that's why he talks about street protest coming into the house. The, the president, Karan, is a statesman. There is no doubt, whatever the government or we may say, that he has admonished both. I am only giving, and that's a frank answer, I am only giving you one very important contextual fact okay. that the opposition would be giving up its role, its obligation as an opposition if for less than a week out of three sessions with the highest productivity in comparison to the BJP opposition, we did it for a very valid reason which affected the fabric 
the secular fabric and the fundamental fabric of this country. All it required from the Prime Minister was a statement, which okay. he refused to do. Well, yes, but let's not that go into who the owners of responsibility vests with, because that is not something the President addressed. You may be right to bring it up in defense of the opposition, but the President didn't bear it in mind when he made his comment. Akar Patel, the President went also a critical step further. He spoke about joint sessions, something that Arun Jaitley of late has repeatedly said the government will not hesitate to use if legislation gets stalled in the upper house. Now, in contrast to Mr. Jaitley's repeated statements that the government will use a, a joint session, the president pointed out that since 1952, joint sessions have only been called four times. Do you believe that's another subtle way of saying to the government he wouldn't approve of too many joint sessions to pass stalled bills? I don't think personally that the BJP is looking to that as a solution. Uh, Mr. Modi's brand is a delivery and I think he will stick by what he's done in the past few months. If the con There is a sequence to what has happened. The BJP has pushed through, through the ordinances because the Congress has chosen to disrupt. Whether or not they've been right in doing so is uh, debatable. I think they've not been right in doing so. But the BJP can always claim that they are sequentially later and uh, Mr. Modi, I don't think given the way that the constitution is, is going to back off from, uh, from the track that he has taken. Except for the fact that Arun Jaitley, in total contrast to your opinion, has repeatedly said in public fora that the government won't hesitate to use joint sessions to pass ordinances if that's the only way of doing it. So, is the president well, not in a uh, sense problem, indicating in response that to that he wouldn't approve of too many joint sessions? No, I think there is a practical problem that the BJP will have to face. That in a joint session, you will have to face as many noisy Rajya Sabha MPs as you would in the Rajya uh, You might have more people on your side, but you will have a lot of the other side as well. So I don't think necessarily that that is a, a solution. I don't think myself that that will be something that the BJP will actively pursue. All right, you may be right, although I'll just point out for the sake of the audience that Arun Jaitley has repeatedly said that he is prepared to go down the joint session route. So, Mr. Rabji, speaking specifically, about ordinances and about the need to avoid too many joint sessions. This is what the president said, I'm quoting him, the ruling party has the major responsibility to pass laws, so it should take the initiative to bring the opposition around. And today's Hindu, in its main lead front page headline, has interpreted <coughs> that comment to mean the following joint session no solution to end Rajya Sabha logjam. Now if that interpretation from the Hindu is a correct one, does it suggest that there's a piquant problem for the government? I don't agree quite agree with the Hindu comment. I think we're reading too much into the president's statement. He was making general observations. He was setting out the legal position as it exists in the constitution. As I said, the real test is, is it, is the legislation of an urgent nature? Is it such that it can't brook delay? Then if because of certain reasons it's not allowed to be passed, can the majority will use the ordinary Can I interrupt? Route. Can the but president... The solution? Can I interrupt and put this to you? You keep insisting the president was making comments of a general nature, but the truth is he's making them against a specific background. That background is the stalling of the upper house. The second background is the passage of some nine or ten ordinances in the space of just eight months. And the third is the repeated comment made by Arun Jaitley that he's prepared to go down the joint session route if need be to get those ordinances converted into acts. Surely, therefore, these are not theoretical comments being made by the president. They have a specific context and background. Surely you have to read them into that background. I think you're reading too much into his statement with regard to a specific ordinance. His observation was general, not aimed at the content of any ordinance. And I think that is what he said. And he rightly made a balanced statement All right. by pointing out to the opposition's duty also to not disrupt the house and let it function. Absolutely. As but I said, there's an admonition here to both party. sides. Let me, let me, and it's very interesting that you're prepared to accept the admonition to the opposition, but you're not prepared to accept the admonition to the government in context of ordinances and in context of joint sessions. Surely that's a bit strange. What's changed, Karan? 
Was the uh, president the taking of uh, taking note of any particular ordinance? No, he's talking about Suppose ordinances an in ordinance general, and they've of, been dead about passed by this government. No, no, one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. Suppose the ordinance deals with a matter of an urgent nature, which doesn't bloop the day. Then what happens? Then the government is paralyzed, and the country cannot go through uh, inform, uh, necessary reform, All right. or necessary measures. So let me, let me say, let me say yours, is a, very, yours is a very context-neutral interpretation of the president and perhaps particularly benign to the government and not that benign to the opposition. Let me leave it there. Sambit Patra, I'm going to pursue the less benign interpretation with you. And from the government's point of view, the question is this. Will you pursue the Arun Jaitley line? And in disregard of the president's advice, go for joint sessions, perhaps repeatedly if need be, to pass stalled bills? Or will you allow ordinances like land, insurance and coal, which the opposition is opposed to, to lapse? Which of the two will you go for? Karan, let me correct you. In fact, I have been listening to this whole debate and you said that Mr. Arun Jaitley has been quite, uh, I mean, standing with the ordinance route and with the, uh, with the joint session route. I would say, no, that's not the fact. I Mr. Arun Jaitley has been repeatedly... In I fact, quote Mr. him to you. Open man magazine, 9th January. We no, will go ahead just and resort to all procedures in the Constitution complete, for legislating on the measures we have planned. When asked specifically by papers, he made Only it clear he meant ago. ordinances Karan, please allow and me to joint complete. sessions. Only about four days ago, I was listening to Mr. Arun Jaitley in the Global uh, Business Summit. Uh, by the uh, ET, ET summit in fact, and Mr. Arun Jaitley was quite categorical and emphatic in saying that I will go by the persuasive route, that the Bharatiya Janata Party believes best in the persuasive route and only under extraordinary circumstances would we think of a joint session. Definitely the extraordinary situation is a situation when the country really needs to go ahead. Okay. And as far as the president's context is seen, I see it in a very different way. Rather, Mr. Abhishek Manu Singhvi was right to point out that the president is one of the tallest parliamentarians that the country has today and so under such a scenario when the president was wagging his finger towards the opposition as and well and towards your you government have, uh, don't forget that as much towards your government as the opposition let me come to it Karan I mean you gave everyone an uninterrupted time allow me something I mean, when Mr. Abhishek Manu Singh, we said that he was a parliamentarian par excellence definitely when the parliamentarian was pointing to the fact that you have erred he very well pointed to the fact that there was no context in which you should have done what you did in the sense that Abhishek Manu Singhvi was trying to justify that they erred there or rather they stalled the parliament because the prime okay. minister did let's not, not make let's a not, statement. Let's not make the, this party political between the two of you and use the president as an opportunity to no, no, fire no, no. shots at each Since other. Since you are discussing the president's speech, it's but natural. You're it adding to context to the, the president which the president didn't necessarily have in his words. So let's leave that out. I want to put something to Abhishek Singhvi. This is something the president said, I'm quoting him. The opposition has a right to oppose, expose, and if the numbers permit, depose. But under no circumstances should there be disruption of proceedings. Are you prepared to bear that advice in mind and ensure that the next session, the budget session, does not go down the same route of disruption as the last session did? Uh, <coughs> The answer is absolutely, unconditionally yes. That is, in fact, the track record of the Congress. And two short points, Karan. One, of the three sessions I've told you, the vast majority has been that. Two, the accusers have a 10-year statistical record. It will tell you from 2004 to 14 that when they are in opposition, they disrupt much more. Number three and last, the record before 2004 to 98 will again show you that disruptions are far fewer and far lesser. Now the point is, we do it as the rarest of rare exception. Just consider, in quick okay. succession, from the HRD ministry to Exmas to Gharvapsi to Dharm change, all happening in one week's time, and we simply wanted a statement because, and remember All one right, more thing, we're, Karan, we're parties ourselves. absolutely against each other, okay, got together. I take your point. I it take was not your just point. one party. That's Everybody the context together. which justifies the disruptions. It's not a context the president bore in mind or expressed when he made his comment. Let me put this to you, Karpatit. Are you surprised that the president has said these things in public? <clears throat> because up till now, 
no president has admonished any government or opposition or the behavior of parliament in quite this way as far as at least I can record. And certainly Pratibha Patil, who suffered much the same sort of problem when she was president and the parliament was not functioning, didn't speak out in the same way. I think he was quite right to do it now. I wish it had been done a little earlier. But I think what forced his hand was the uh, obstinacy of both sides. The fact that the Congress insisted on not debating legislation and uh, creating chaos and the fact that the BJP chose on the other hand to uh, push through uh, uh, ordinances. Uh, we, we must accept as a country that a certain level of chaos has been uh, internalized by the uh, parliamentary system and the media doesn't have a problem with that. We see uh, headlines normally which say you know government trapped, government on the back foot, government cornered when this sort of chaos happens in the houses. What ought to have happened instead is that uh, proper debate for, for uh, legislation. I think the uh, president is uh, frankly uh, fed up of, of the way things are at the moment. Okay. Sorry, Srabji, let me put it like this to you. And this is really why I express a bit so, of surprise at the fact the president has gone public. Like the British monarch in Walter Badgett's famous analysis of the powers of the monarchy, our president too has the right to warn to advise and to be consulted. But traditionally, those rights have been exercised in private behind closed doors. This time, the president has warned in public. Are you surprised he's done that publicly? To whom is the question? To you. Oh. Well, current, you're seeing admonished. Maybe that's how you read it. I would rather say he's drawn the attention of both the parties, of all the members of the House, to the correct constitutional position. Because I don't understand. Suppose there is legislation, the content of which there is no objection. Again, suppose that urgently necessary to enact the legislation. But it's not about to be done. So what happens? Is the government uh, powerless? Yes. But I'm not as, talking as about the nature of the legislation or its urgency. I was asking, are you surprised that this warning or admonition or call it whatever you want has been delivered publicly rather than behind closed doors, which is what traditionally either the British monarch or the Indian president does. It's the public nature that I'm questioning. Are you surprised by that? No, I'm not surprised. And I'm not also finding fault with the president. He cannot be compared to the monarch. He has more rights than the uh, monarch. Okay. Perhaps he thought it was necessary to let the parties know how they should conduct themselves in the House and not obstruct legislation which makes it necessary for the government to take the ordinance route. Some Avoid the ordinance. Ordinance is an exception. Okay. Law making is from Parliament. Let's, but let's, let's, not, let's, let's not go back to ordinances. It's not just ordinances that I'm talking about. I'm talking about the whole nature of the advice, warning, admonition from the President. Sambhaj Patra, this is the last thing the President said. He says, it's incumbent on the ruling party and opposition to sit together and find a workable solution to avoid disruption. Does that speak? spirit of cooperation exist between government and opposition or is the divide between you and Congress, you and the left, you and the TMC in particular perhaps so deep and so bitter that that cooperation is almost impossible today? And that's what I was calling the persuasive route that Arun Jaitley has oft spoken about. That in a parliamentary democracy, the best route is a route of persuasion. And we have been trying, trying to persuade our opposition as well. But we had seen as to how the opposition was a stubborn opposition. And as far as the uh, so-called admonition of precedent is concerned, I would say that the ordinance route, in fact, ultimately rests on the table of the president. If the president is not convinced, he can always reject the ordinance. And remember the news item in the Indian Express when there was a story that the president had asked about the emergency in the land acquisition bill and he was well explained by a galaxy of ministers from the government as to
to what the emergency was and okay. the president was convinced. All so right. I believe in his speech there is one part in which the president is convinced and he has put his signatures to the ordinance and the other part of the speech in which he speaks about the opposition not cooperating with the government, he is probably not convinced with the idea that the opposition is floating. You really do speak like a party political spokesperson. You don't miss an opportunity to score a point against Congress but that of course is your job. Your fingers gone up. I'll give you 20 seconds before I end this particular story. Abhishek Singh, we go ahead. You earned the right to a repast for 20 fact, seconds only. Uh, in fact, on the last point which you made, I think of, apart from being a very clear comment on both the government and the opposition, there is perhaps inbuilt in the President's remarks a warning that you can't take me for granted every time you keep doing ordinances and sending me ordinances to sign. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I'm pointing out to you that emergency and that is perhaps a portent for the future for those who want to do ordinary charge. Touche, Abhishek Singhvi, you got ones. your own back very ably to Sambit Patra and you also produced the answer that I was looking for in a sense from Sodhi Sarabji which he was reluctant to give me. There we end this particular episode. My thanks to all four of my guests.